Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, shooting uh, from just behind the Lugnuts facility. And uh, what we have here today is a 1991 Mercedes-Benz 500E. This is going on Bring a Trailer, and this will be an in-depth uh, preview, in-depth video. It's a preview of the car for the benefit of, uh, of any bidders or, or interested browsers on the Bring a Trailer auction site. So my videos are pretty long and pretty in-depth, and they're, they're, they're meant for the prospective buyer of this car in that if they're going to wire money to somebody they don't know in a different country, uh, I'm gonna try to be as descriptive as possible so that they know exactly what they're getting and have the confidence to bid on an online auction. Um, so we'll start with a little bit of history on the Mercedes-Benz uh, 500E and E500. There's more in-depth sources than me, but I'll, I'll give you a, a framework for it. Uh, we'll talk about uh, this particular car. Um, we'll do a walk around uh, showing any flaws and blemishes uh, on the exterior paint, chrome, glass, rubber, wheels, etc. We'll move into the car and do um, the same thing inside. We'll have a look at the engine bay and the trunk area. Uh, we will uh, put the car on the hoist. Um, we've uh, degreased it and given it a light cryo blasting just so you can see exactly what you're getting. Uh, so we'll examine the undercarriage of the car. We'll do a paint meter um, uh, report on all of the panels so you can see the original paint depth. And then lastly, we'll go through all the maintenance receipts and uh, we'll show you what's been done to the car. So these videos usually take 45 minutes to an hour. Um, oh, I did forget the driving video. So we'll do a short start up, hold start and driving video. So these videos take between 45 minutes and an hour. Um, but by the end of it, you'll there won't be any uh, questions, I don't think, as to the condition of this car. And uh, even if you're not buying or interested in bidding on this particular car, some of, some of the items that I point out might be applicable to any old Mercedes or one to four Mercedes uh, for some trouble areas, okay? So, so we can get started. Uh, and I've um, broken this video into sections. And so there's a table of contents. So if you don't want to digest the full hour of the video in one sitting and you just want to skip to the paint meter report or skip to the driving video or whatever it is, then, uh, then you can do so. so. So a brief history of the, uh, of the 500E, which later changed its name to E500. Um, the Mercedes 124 body, which this is, which came out in 1996 and lasted to 1995, uh, was uh, you know one of the ma mainstream production cars for Mercedes. I think they made, just from memory, like 1.75 million of them or something like that. Could have that wrong. If it is, I'll correct it in the, in the video. Um, they made uh, the two-door coupe, which was the CE, the four-door sedan wagon and they made the convertible. They didn't make very many of the specialty cars. So I think they only made 20,000 of the convertibles and 10,000 of the 500Es against you know, a million seven or something like that of the entire production. It's one of the most voluminous Mercedes ever produced. In other words, they made more W124s than I think practically any other, any other Mercedes. In the 80s, AMG took this body shell and at great cost made something like a, called a hammer and they shoehorned, a, or they made a four valve head for the M117 engine, put that in the car um, and made a real hot rod out of it with fender flares and so on. And uh, those cars are extremely valuable today. I think, I think one sold for $700,000. But they, AMG sort of pioneered the hot rod mid-size sedan. Not that Mercedes hadn't done, done it before, because they did it with a, a 300 SEL 
putting the big 6.3 liter in the mid-sized body shop. But that's what AMG did. And uh, it got very popular. And uh, Mercedes then decided to do their own version of AMG's hammer. They didn't have production for it. This is in Stuttgart. Um, and they didn't have production, but Porsche did. And the two, the two companies did work together in those days. Uh, Porsche was thinking, actually went to Mercedes first for their initial SUV, uh, which they were going to do on the, on the, on the G-Wagon. So the companies did collaborate in the past. Um, and Porsche had excess capacity because at the time um, they had just, I think they just finished their 959 production, if I'm not mistaken, and they had excess production capacity. So what happened, and, and the 124 body was never meant for a V8 engine. So Mercedes-Benz trucked the body shells to Porsche. They literally got hammers out and banged out the center of the monocoque to accept the wider V8 engine and gearbox. Mercedes in 1990 had just come out with their R129 um, SL, and it had a brand new four cam engine in it and different suspension and so on. So what, what Mercedes did is they took the drivetrain of an SL500 R129 and they stuck it in the W124 body shell. And that created the 500E. It was very expensive. It was done at great cost. The, uh, the bodies in white were shipped to Porsche. I believe all the SL componentry was shipped to Porsche. Porsche installed the drivetrain. Then they trucked it back to Mercedes-Benz for finishing. When they were done with 500E production, they st on the same line, they started the RS2 Audi as well. Although that car was a little bit different and it had some actual Porsche components in it. Okay, so this is a Porsche Mercedes hybrid, if you will. It was uh, built, manufactured in part by Porsche. It was the 124 body shell with the SL500 components. All right, it was, you know, the fastest four-door sedan in the world at the time, and, uh, you know, the real Audubon Stormer. I believe the first year it came to North America was 92. This is a 91, and it's a Euro car. Um, it wouldn't have been born exactly like this uh, because it would have had the 16-inch Mercedes alloy wheels, the 18-inch monoblock AMGs were a popular upgrade, and I believe they were seen on some of the limited edition run-out versions of the E500, which they were I think E60s is what they were called. So it's a, a the proper wheel for the car and a popular upgrade because the, the 16-inch wheels, you know, don't look as good as this. Okay. So uh, that's what we have here. We have maybe 10,000 produced um, in those. Days, the rest of the world cars were different than the North American cars. Today they're the same. Um, and the ROW cars, as they're known, uh, wouldn't have had, uh, they would have different ride height, different headlights, and some other detailed changes. In North America, the cars had to be raised up a little bit. So an ROW car now, today, is desirable. And many North American cars were retrofitted with ROW suspension and lighting and stuff. Okay. Uh, particularly the headlights of the North American car uh, didn't look as good as the Euro. All right. So this, okay, so that's what we have here is an E500. This is a 1991. This is the first model year. It's a German car. It came to North America. Um, we have, uh, we'll get into later in the video, the whole service history. It has a Mercedes-Benz factory replacement engine that was done, um, I think at about 170,000 kilometers, we'll check that. It's got 230 now, and that was a dealer installed $50,000 bill. Because when it went into service, one of the techs didn't screw the drain, the drain pl plug in tightly enough, all the oil leaked out and it blew up the original engine. So it's got a factory Mercedes, brand new engine put in the car at the dealer, with a $50,000 bill and the invoices for it. Okay. So we can start with the windscreen. We don't have any cracks, um, but we do have some stone pits. 
Okay, that's probably the worst of it right there. It hasn't spread, um, but we don't have any other, but it, it's got several uh, stone chips in it, but they're small. Uh, the wiper is still supple. The wiper mechanism works properly. The squirters work properly. We come around to the front of the vehicle. Um, you've got, you know, some very, very minor stone pits, uh, as you as you would uh, expect. Okay, so nothing that's a dent, and there's no rust starting or anything. Um, but uh, we have some minor chips on the front. The front grille, the chrome is is good. There's a little bit of a little bit of rain. We have one we have one dent here slight dent in the front. Um, for the light lenses, uh, they aren't yellowed and they aren't cracked. And this area down here is a little bit vulnerable to stone chips. And we can see that it has a few, but it's not too bad. And we still have the headlamp wipers. And again, the rubber is still soft on those. Um, we've got, uh, again, no uh, chipping on this. Uh, we've got a little bit of discoloration here. Uh, just It looks just to be uh, from the wiper, just uh, marking up the glass there, okay? It's not, uh, it's not burnt or anything, it's just brown. Okay, a little bit, a few more stone chips here. For the rubber, you know, we don't have any rubber scuff. Often they'll, you'll catch a corner on something and you'll take a divot out of the corner of the rubber. And, um, and, the, and the rubber actually looks pretty good. Uh, the spoiler, again, we see a little bit of evidence of some stone chips. The fog lights are uncracked. And we'll go over here. This light is uncracked as well. The tow, the cover for the tow hook is intact. Okay, but there is kind of uniform stone chips on the lower spoiler. Um, Let's go to the side of the car, um, looking down the flanks. I do not see any stone chips uh, or door dings on the car. Possible there's something there, but I don't, I don't see anything. It looks perfectly smooth to me. There's no hail damage. Um, we do have, if you look down here, you know, you can see a little bit of gravel rash where the fared flender, the sill meets the fender. And so this area is vulnerable to gravel rash and we do have a little bit there. The chrome strip, if we can get that, uh, looks good. I think I saw a dent on the front one here. So we've got a little bit of, pin, a little bit of a ping on the chrome strip on the driver's door. The mirror uh, it looks good. The, the, the rubber is not uh, oxidized. The rubber is still supple on the, um, on the doors. And the door is open and shut uh, with a typical Mercedes uh, solidity. The sunroof, um, it looks good. There's lots of grease in it. It's not gunked up and works properly. And somebody's been in there and cleaned it, you can tell. Sometimes this area gets really uh, filled with dirt. Okay. Um, the body molding strips look good. Uh, the door gaps, if we stand back a little bit and look at the door gaps, uh, you know, these lines, these are all perfect. The doors sit flush. There's no fitment issue with any of these gaps. Okay, so it's it's hasn't been hit and you know, nobody's mucked with the doors. Okay. Uh, you can probably take a look at this wheel. These, uh, these continental tires, uh, we can see a date stamp of, I found it before, it's 2022. Uh, so they're the sixth, the sixth week of 2022. And these are uh, extreme contact, extreme con sorry, Continental Extreme Contact, and they're 245 40 ZR18s all the way around. The uh, rims are AMG monoblocks. They've been cleaned on the inside, and all the brake dust has been cleaned out, and they look good. We don't see any 
uh, curb rash on this wheel. Let's go to the back wheel here. And uh, we've got a little bit of a mark here. And a little bit of delamination from the clear starting there, but otherwise it's a nice shape. Okay. Uh, moving around, the power aerial works. <clears throat> um, these, um, we'll show the rear window here in the corner. These can delaminate and water can get in between the, uh, the uh, two panes of glass and then it clouds up and then it takes out your uh, uh, heated rear windscreen. So we have a clear rear window with no delamination. Um, moving to the rear, trim strip. The chrome trim strip is good. There is no chunks taken out of the bumper. It's in nice shape. Uh, the load area, you know, sometimes this area is uh, scraped up a little bit just from loading, you know, golf clubs or whatever, and uh, it's still in nice shape. The carpet and the wells uh, are unstained, and we have the um, original 16-inch uh, spare tire and the tool roll, the tools, I think there's a few pieces missing. Um, I might actually have the pieces that are missing here, so we can talk about that later. There, there should be a screwdriver, uh, another couple of another couple of wrenches, uh, I'd have to see what else, but I think there's a few other pieces missing in the tool roll. It's the correct red pouch thing. Um, it closes correctly. These areas here, sometimes they get corroded, you know, the bolts get corroded, and I don't see any evidence of that, okay? So that looks nice under here. We can see, you know, the Euro stickers for the uh, premium gas, tire pressures, and I love this. It says, I think, for driving over 100 miles an hour to raise the, uh, it's in German, but anyway, driving more than 100 miles an hour to raise the tire pressure. Uh, okay, so again, this flank, I don't see any door dings or imperfections in the paint. It looks clean to me. Can't see. Uh, we all, we'll get the standard bit of gravel rash on this uh, lower sill. This wheel, I don't see any, well there's one tiny little mark there, otherwise in nice shape. Okay. Um, For the door fit again, it's perfect. Factory, and the door is shut as you would expect on Mercedes too. Um, I don't see any flaws. I don't see any seals that are dried up. Um, everything's, all the rubber seems supple. The glass is good. There's no scratches on the glass. Check the front, uh, the front rim. Oh, there's a tiny little tiny little bit of marking on it, but uh, generally excellent. We even have AMG valve stem caps. Okay. So now is probably a good time for the paint meter. So we can see what we have for paint depth. This is reading in micrometers. So it's one one hundredth of a millimeter. Um, factory paint depth on this would be 100 to 150. Um, Twos, you know, something in the twos usually means the clear has been redone, but not the paint. And a, re, and a full repaint is a three, 300 or 400, so that's 0.3 or 0.4 of a millimeter. And if something has quite a bit of primer, maybe you get up to a millimeter, and then after a millimeter, it's, it's basically filling. So let's go through, we'll start over here. I'll just go through every panel so we know what's here. And at 236, 220, 
209, 199, 207. So 2 is generally, that's a bit too light or too thin for a full repaint, but a bit too thick for factory paint that's never been touched. Usually when that, that happens, uh, that's, being, that's re-cleared, and the clear coat in those areas um, faded, and it was actually fairly common in an 80s Mercedes, just a wet sediment. Let's see what we have here. 119, 119. Okay, so these, this panel here is going to be original paint in the, in the low 100s. So those are all in the low to mid twos. Let's check the rear trunk lid. And those are all consistent. consistent in the twos. Let's try the roof. That's 150. Now, 100 micrometer variation is only one-tenth of a millimeter. We're not talking about a lot. So again, we're in the we're in the low twos, low to mid twos. The threes and fours in this panel. You can get some rogue readings if you don't let it sit right. It would be possible if you did a bare metal respray, a really, really, really good one, um, to, to get paint depth in the, in the low twos. It is possible, it's just not very likely. So usually when you get something that's in the twos, it's just clear. It's not, it's not the full paint. And normally, you wouldn't strip the car back down to bare metal. You just paint over the original paint. So probably, again, this door is original. Trees in this area of the front. Fours. So, again, you, have, you get some rogue readings. Let's do the hood. Well, the hood's in the fours, so the hood, you know, I can fairly confidently say the hood has been repainted. Also, I think this fender has been repainted too, because it's in the threes. Well, I'm not so sure. When you paint one panel, you blend it as well. And so you can paint one panel, but then blend the clear onto the next panel, which might explain why you get a thicker reading here and a thinner reading down there. 
but uh, let's continue. <clears throat> So the hood is a solid, they're solid fours on the hood. Okay, so I think, you know, we've seen a low of maybe 125, we've seen a high of 100. Um, so we have, um, you know, 0.3 of a millimeter variation around the whole car, which is not very much. If I was to give my educated opinion on what's happened with the car, it, it appears to be a combination of original panels, repainted panel, and clear that has been blended or re -clear. Okay, So um, we do not see anything that has any amount of filler in it, and we do not see any reading that's more than 400 micrometers or 0.4 of a millimeter. So we have a sound body shell that um, you can, I think, be fairly confident has not been in a collision and has just had, you know, basically paint work that I'll describe as maintenance rather than, you know, accident repair. So that's what the paint meter and paint depth tells me. Okay, so into the interior. Um, I suppose the first thing you might look at are the seats and the bolster wear. And um, I like to see original patina on the seats. It's easy enough to get some black spray paint and spray it over and make it look good for the photographs, but it plasticizes the seat and it loses its suppleness and it loses its aroma. So I really don't like it when people paint seats just to make them look good on online auctions. This one has some honest patina. It, 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 it retains its original suppleness. It has not been painted or doctored in any way. And uh, these materials Mercedes used in the 80s and 90s are exceptionally long lived. And we don't see any other meaningful wear on the seat at all, on the driver's seat. We've got a fire extinguisher that's built into the front. That was a later addition. Um, uh, we have this really curious appendage, which was done at, at what appears to be great expense because it's hand-stitched leather and piped and so on. And it appears to be uh, a receiver for, a, for a, a period cellular phone. So, so we haven't taken it out and uh, it is kind of a funny looking piece, but it's really nicely done actually. Okay, so this is a Euro 124. It has manual climate control. The uh, North American ones will have the push button. Um, the push button ones can be expensive to fix, so this, in, this is a good thing for many people. The wood in these cars, um, if it's in the sun, it'll bleach relatively easily. You can get a pretty good idea for what a car has been through by how dark the burl wood is. And in this, in this case, it looks almost new. Also, the wood is very susceptible to cracking, and uh, this wood uh, hasn't. It's got some light, light, um, uh, you know, light scratching, um, but uh, these pieces are not broken. It's not cracked, and it retains the dark, uh, the dark finish of when it was new. Some, sometimes the cars from sunny climates, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it all takes on the, the lighter color of this. Okay. Um, the dash is uh, uncracked. Like again, that can happen from these cars that live in hot climates. And uh, we're showing 230,574 kilometers on it. But again, keep in mind that I think it's only about 50,000 kilometers on the brand new factory engine. The uh, carpets are all in nice shape and we don't have any excessive wear to the pedals. We can see those. And uh, the door cards on each side, you know, sometimes they get banged up in this area or scuffed from people's feet. And sometimes the sill area, I mean, there's a few little, I don't know if you can see that here, few little scratches, because, um, you know, people drag their feet across. And this piece here can get a little bit beat up. And we've got tiny little marks in it, but uh, nothing substantial. And uh, we don't have any scratches or you know, other flaws 
in the uh, door panel, okay? The headliner uh, is nice. Let me just close the sunroof for you. And the sunroof works. They can be difficult to fix if they don't. And uh, they can stain, you know, at the, or at the rear end of the, um, uh, the sunroof panel. And this one doesn't. So the headliner looks uh, perfect in this cars. The visors both work and the lights come on. So all that works uh, properly. So all 500Es have the twin rear seats. I don't, I don't recall any with a bench seat and they all have the, the wooden cubby uh, between the seats and the armrest. These um, headrests fold up and then release uh, pneumatically and uh, it still has the original um, uh, first aid kit in it. The rear parcel shelf is unfaded and unmarked up and the rear carpets uh, look, uh, look excellent. We don't have floor mats, carpet floor mats for the rear for some reason. first thing most people ask about, at least to do with the engine bay, is the engine wiring harness. In the 80s, with the, with the 124 bodies, Mercedes wanted to use some more environmentally friendly materials like the glove blocks liner and recycled, recycled materials for different parts. The sheath for the wiring harness was, you know, one of these products and it deteriorated quite quickly. This one has had it replaced, it is in the maintenance file. Um, if we look in the engine bay, there is, I mean, it's just an engine bay, it's cleaned up. There's no evidence of uh, anything leaking uh, from the valve covers. There's no oil on the exhaust manifolds. There's no oil, um, there's no oil smell, because sometimes that can happen, that uh, man of, or the, the valve cover gaskets leak oil on directly beneath onto the uh, exhaust manifolds, and then you get the characteristic burning oil smell. That isn't the case here, and um, I do not see any leaks. It's a little bit tight in here, um, but I do not see any evidence of uh, uh, any leaks there's no there's no leaks on the ground certainly I mean there's a little bit of an oil film um, right there you just pick that up you know so it could be who knows uh, how long that's been there but again there's no there's no evidence that it is leaking um, you know it looks pretty dry in there I mean, you can see, if you look down there, you can see, you know, at some point something did leak, but I don't, I don't, it's not wet. So there's nothing exceptional or modified in the engine bay. I guess we have a k and filter. Uh, we do have R134A, and that would have been a retrofit because I think in, they, they introduced that in 1993. This is a 1991. So that can be important. Changing your AC system is uh, very expensive. Okay get a close-up of the data plate uh, right there. We don't have any leaking from the power steering reservoir and uh, it all looks pretty good. Okay so let's have a look at the uh, underside of this 1991 uh, Mercedes-Benz 500e and so we'll look for uh, we'll look for corrosion, we'll look for damage, we'll look for, um, you know, anything out of the ordinary. And we'll get a general idea of, uh, you know, what this car uh, has been through. So to start with, uh, you know, we can look at the, front, um, at the front bumper. It's a little bit vulnerable. Um, sometimes there's, you know, pieces, uh, chunks taken out. Um, you know, the tow hook cover is in place. And we've got some, you know, very light, uh, uniform scraping along the bottom edge, which is not uh, unexpected. 
but uh, nothing, that, uh, nothing that's a gouge or a scrape. And we can also get a good look at the uh, rubber on the bumper. And again, um, we don't see any chunks out of it and all the, uh, all the pieces uh, are in place, okay? So going under the car now, uh, we have this front uh, under tray and we can look and see that the fasteners are present. And again, we've got some, some light uh, scraping on that piece. The underside of this car has been degreased and it's given a light cryo blasting. Not, not an aggressive enough treatment to take off the cosmoline and stuff, uh, you know, from the components, but just to clean it up to sort of show what, uh, what we have. Okay, so we can see the uh, springs and uh, suspension bits, and they have not been blasted uh, with rocks, and, um, you know, they're not starting to rust, and we can see that the rubbers are still in good shape. And uh, again, it all looks pretty good in here. And all the, importantly, all the fasteners uh, aren't rusty. So it means if you do do any work, you probably won't be breaking any bolts. Okay, so, you know, we can see the rubber on the ball joints is good. We see the original marks still on the springs. Um, we, uh, we can see up in under tray, there's no oil accumulation there from leaks. Fasteners are still in good shape. Yeah, again, looking at the ball joints on the driver's side, the springs, we can see the, you know, the yellow dabs from the factory. And again, all the fasteners uh, are uh, un, uncorroded, okay? The plastic under trays uh, have not been broken up. If they get smashed in the front, usually they take these pieces with them, and it can be a big, it can be a bit of a mess. Uh, we can see the rotors, which have some wear on them, so maybe they're half gone, maybe maybe a little bit more. So front rotors uh, would be, you know, something that's probably going to come up in the next, you know, 10, 20,000 kilometers or so. Uh, and uh, you see the pads in there. So front brakes might be <clears throat> on the cards. You don't need them right now, but you can see there's a little bit of a lip there, okay? There's no leaking from the shocks. Um, I don't see any evidence that the car was jacked in the wrong places. Sometimes they can have dents in the floorboards from incorrect placement of the jacking pads. Uh, we see the brake lines are uncorroded. Uh, the Exhaust is in nice shape. Uh, we see this piece here is a bit is a heat shield, so that's pretty thin metal, and those are the first pieces to go. Um, so we can see that it's corroded there. Now that's just that's not the pipe itself; that's just the heat shield, and the rest of the heat shields are in good shape. Um, the rear muffler section, I'll show you that, uh, has been uh, has been replaced. Still, still has the tag on it. Okay. So looking at the floorboards. Uh, floor pans again it all looks good the sills look good there's no sometimes again you, the jack gets jacked in the right place it cracks the undercoating it, uh, water gets in there and it rusted so that's not the case here everything looks good um, I mean it's a it's a it's not a it's not a queen um, but uh, you know it's an honest car that's been looked after and doesn't look like anything really bad has happened to it underneath here, okay? So let's go around to the back. On the rear suspension, again, these pieces still are unrusty. Uh, you know, they get peppered with gravel and then they, the chips and then they start to rust, so it's not happened here. Probably be be because the car's never been driven in winter. Um, you know, I have a, a, four, a 126 sedan that it was driven in the winter and you can really see the effects after not too long a time. Okay, so rear shocks, again, they are, they are not leaking. You know, nothing in there looks corroded. Uh, all the fasteners look pretty good. It's got the original coatings on it. You know, we don't, we don't have any wetness underneath the, uh, the differential. Uh, there's no leaking from the axle seals. 
Uh, we have, well, the rear rotors again are probably 40%. So, you know, you'll probably do the brakes, you know, sometime in the near future. Looking in the wheel arch, uh, there's no corrosion, no damage. Um, you know, they can get blasted, you know, on from gravel on, on this, on this uh, leading edge of the rear wheel. So we get a little bit, a little bit of um, gravel rash there, but really hardly noticeable. And again, trailing the rear wheel, leading the rear wheel, we have that and where the fender flare fl flares out. And then of course, the trail, trailing edge of the, of the, of the arch gets uh, gravel as well, but it's actually pretty good, okay? So rear bumper, I don't see any chunks out of it um, or evidence that, that it was uh, bumped into something. I mean, sometimes it can get a bump and you can break the clips underneath or buckle this piece. So that's all in nice shape. We do see it looks like it was backed into something and the fuel, well, it's not the fuel tank. That's just the, re that's just the cavity for the spare tire. So that looks like it got a dent in it at some point. Um, all this looks pretty good. Drain tubes are unplugged. Uh, there's no mice in there. <laughs> um, so all that looks good. And there we go. So it's not a, you know, it's a, a mid mileage 500D. It's been driven. Um, but there's a uh, part from that one dent in the rear spare tire well. Uh, it all looks pretty clean and honest. Most importantly, there's no significant damage and there's no, uh, and there's no corrosion. Okay, so that is the underside of this 1991 Mercedes-Benz 500E. It looks pretty good. And for this section of the video, we can go through all of the documentation uh, for this 1991 500E. Uh, so I've, um, I've organized it all and I've put it in different piles and each uh, pile corresponds to, uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, uh, chapters of this uh, car's life. So first of all, we've got, it looks like the original, and, and it's a European car, German delivery car, the, the initial, Records are all in German, and sadly, I don't speak German, so you'll have to bear with me here. But uh, this appears to be the original registration documents showing an in-service date of September 20th, 1991, and uh, the details on the car, and it's sold to a uh, Mr. Hans Huber. And I don't have documentation from 1991. I think I pick it up in 1999 and we see that it's serviced at the dealer and um, with lots of German <laughs> writing on it. So when the car was, you know, approximately 10 years old, it looks like it got a fair amount uh, done to it, including significantly in 2001, uh, it got uh, a, new, a new factory engine. So um, I can get to that invoice here and we see it has about 150,000 kilometers on it and a total uh, cost of 25,000 euros which is about 50,000 Canadian I understand and we have a long block of 17,776 euros and all the associated costs. And my understanding is that was a mistake by one of the techs um, leaving the drain plug and the oil undone, having the thing run out of oil and uh, blowing up the engine and needing a brand new engine. So the car is 230,000 kilometers on it now, so 80,000 on this uh, brand new factory uh, long block um, installed by the German uh, Mercedes-Benz dealer. Okay, so then it looks like this uh, ASL company, they look to be a dealer. So I'm just going to infer that Mr. Huber sold the car to a uh, dealer and then that dealer got a bunch of work done on the car and there's some invoices for several hundred euros for that. And this is in 06. 
Uh, so we've got the first owner, 1991 to 2006. Uh, we have a guy, Jorg or Joe, um, who I understand was a Mercedes-Benz tech and who imported a couple of 500Es from Germany, including this one. So presumably he bought a couple from one from the dealer in Germany. And he imported two 500Es. He's in Niagara Falls. And so we've got the point at which this car gets into Canada in October of 06. And it doesn't stay there for very long. He sells one of the 500Es, I think just within a few months, to uh, this fellow, um, Dan, uh, who is in Chestermere. I understand he is, uh, was an engineer for uh, Synovus. And uh, he has the car from 08 and to about three years. Um, it hasn't really gained a lot of mileage, so it's still at around... It's around 170,000 kilometers. He buys the car on 08 and sells it to the current owner in 2011. And it's got 180 something kilometers on it. And the current owner has had the car for since 2011 and has put uh, you know, approximately 50,000 kilometers on the car. And then we have the service, uh, the service history for the last 10 years on this car from a collection of dealers and specialists. Nothing really exceptional, brakes and tires and batteries and the odd electrical part and so on. No, um, no, no major work at all. Uh, most of it's tires and batteries. Uh, so, okay, so we've got uh, a you know, reasonably complete history from the original owner. Uh, we've got the first owner in Germany, then it goes to a, a dealer. We have, uh, we have basically an importer who's you know, presumably, you know, has this job on the side importing 500Es, um, and it gets uh, sold to uh, a Chestermere resident, has it for three years, um, and then to the current owner. So it really has only had, you know, three owners in its history, and uh, and we have an almost complete uh, history file on the car. So, of course, all this documentation uh, comes with the car, and uh, it'll be in a nice uh, file folder. So we'll do a cold start video. We'll watch the oil pressure gauge. And it, it should peg at three like it does on all, all these Mercedes. Um, we have all the gauges where they're supposed to be. I guess we need to add uh, washer fluid. There's no other uh, lights that uh, come on. This car has traction control, which is the ASR uh, light. It's not on, but it is equipped with traction control. So let's go and listen to the engine. It idles perfectly smooth and I don't hear any valve train noise, no exhaust leaks, nothing unusual. It's an R R129 5-liter 4-cam V8 engine. Uh, operating operating as it should. Uh, this car will have the uh, adjustable rear suspension and that is the oil for that and if, if this is faulty then the car won't, won't sit right and it'll collapse in the rear so that's not happening with this car and that's an expensive system so it's important that that uh, is working correctly and it is in this car. Okay so let's just uh, let's start here to see, see that everything works. Uh, we've got we've got the seat heaters and they're coming on properly. We have the electric windows; they all open and close. We have the sunroof. We demonstrated that before, and it uh, it works fine. There's no squeaks or odd noises from it. We've raised the headrests in the back, and if we hit this button they both fold like they should. Heated rear windscreen works. Uh, the tire with the chains on it, uh, I don't know, forget what that does. I think it, it, it disables the ASR, uh, but we'll leave that. We've got a light in the back 
and that does work. Importantly, we want the AC to blow cold, and uh, it does. I'm doing an AC retrofit on one of my other Mercedes, and it's, it's going to be a $2,500 bill. So it makes uh, you want to make sure the AC works. Okay. So uh, defrost. You can hear the valves changing, so the system works. And then we've got the defrost. Okay, let's turn that. Uh, we have an aftermarket radio. And we have all the instructions for that. Um, ashtray works. There's no odor. Um, can't say that it's been ever been smoked in, but there's no evidence of any of any uh, cigarette smell. Uh, we have the driver's mirror here, and we've got the passenger mirror here. Passenger mirror works. Um, often with aftermarket stereos, the fader doesn't do anything, but actually it does work in this case. Okay, so all this stuff works. Uh, let's take it for a quick drive. Uh, let me let me mention the seat is the the, the padding and the seat still good, and uh, and it's supportive. Sometimes the you know with age. It, and especially if you have a heavier occupant, then the seat, you know, compresses quite a bit. This isn't the case. It's still, um, it's still uh, support. Uh, we have our power seats, which work. Headrests work. Power seat and the passenger side works. Uh, we have the uh, central locking which works. There's a pump in the back that operates that and all of that works. All right. We have economy and sport for the gearbox. It's a four speed automatic. Uh, there's a little bit of movement in the linkage. Um, it's not, not an issue, um, but there's a little bit of movement there. So. Something in the linkage might need a new bushing, but it's fine, but it's, it, it is there. All right. So I love the 500E for its low end torque and the fact that it only has a four speed gearbox because you just surge forward on this wave of torque and the car isn't uh, bothered by, you know, downshifting two or three times. And so you just make this sort of, uh, you know, very smooth, rapid progress. You know, it's geared fairly high. I mean, it's geared for the highway, but when you lay into the gas, it just kind of doesn't stop. And, uh, you know, the speed just builds and builds and builds. Suspension still has lots of compliance. There's no, in this particular car, there's no, um, you know, there's no uh, knocks or shakes. Uh, the car tracks uh, completely straight, and brakes straight. Um, so suspension's still all in nice shape. There's no cracking on the bushings and so on. Steering's still sharp. Take this corner reasonably fast here, and uh, it's got the low-profile 18-inch tires, which move around a lot less than the standard 16. And the car properly hauls. I mean, once you get it over 100 kilometers an hour, it feels like it's really picking up speed. You know, we've just blown through the speed limit without even using a third of the revs. So this is a, the fastest car in the world in came out still a fast car today and uh, you know it has also the virtue of being relatively compact and with excellent visibility as well so it's a really fantastic car I've owned one, I've owned one myself I probably owned half a dozen one two fours the wagon the, the coupe the convertible 500e uh, Sportline as well and uh, this is this is a very fine example there's nothing in the way that it behaves itself that, uh, you know, 
of it to, you know, it gives me gives any rise to any red flags at all. I mean, the car the car uh, shifts and revs and and so on, just like the 500 e should. Um, it has a replacement engine. What what mileage was the replacement engine at again? One hundred and fifty thousand. One hundred and fifty. Okay, so it's got eighty thousand kilometers on a brand new factory Mercedes-Benz engine installed at the Mercedes-Benz dealership, which for these, these are 119 engines, right? Um, which is basically just broken in for this engine. So the car is quiet, there's no wind noise, uh, no evidence of any um, collision uh, damage on this car whatsoever. Um, no uh, misaligned panels or so on, no wind noises, no rattles. I mean, it, 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 that's something about these 80s Benz is they can accumulate huge mileages and still feel and look like brand new cars. Um, you know, the interior leather and wood and so on and, and could pass for a few year old car. Um, the idle is uh, rock steady. It's very hot out right now, so the car has been idling, so it's about 30 degrees Celsius. Oil pressure pegs at, um, at three bar, which is correct. It'll drop a bit below one at, um, at hot idle, uh, which is uh, which is normal. And uh, it just has tremendous, um, you know, tremendous low speed performance. And the car goes. And we'll just demonstrate the brakes. And you know, braking is uh, is very solid. The, the road has there's lots of trucks around here, so the road's a bit a bit uh, candid. But um, all in all, this, this is an excellent example. Um, it's been well maintained. We have full service history on the car. Everything works in the car uh, as it should. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's a great car. <clears throat>